Welcome to Competitive War Groove. Today we're going over Mercia and how you should probably change up your playstyle when you're playing Mercia or when you're playing against Mercia. We're going into all things Mercia, especially focusing on Mercia's groove. Now we're going to start off slow, just going over the basics. What kind of units work with Mercia? What are some common tactics you can run with Mercia? And give you some workable examples on like a custom map. And then we're going to go into some actual games and finally end it with a tournament match example of everything that we talked about. Alright, this is really exciting, so let's get started and learn competitive Mercia. Now, Mercia is not only the queen of Cherry Stone, but Mercia is the queen of healers in Wargroove. Commonly ranked in the top 5 among all commanders, Mercia is definitely the most used healer. Now, to charge up her groove, since it's fast charge, you can really do it with just one enemy village nearby. Take a hit on it on turn 1, and then finish it off on turn 2. Just from that, you'll have ended your turn twice, killed, and attacked a village. That puts you at 90%. You just need to end your turn on turn 3, and by turn 4, you'll already have your groove. This is one way to get groove very quickly with just a single enemy village. But more realistically, when you're in a match, you can just walk around for four turns and then assassinate a sword, and you'll also have groove right around the same time, maybe turns four, five, or six. And this generally happens right as you exit the capturing phase, the opening of a match. So you'll have it right coming into battle. It's perfect timing. Now let's take a look at a common battle scenario with Mercia's favorite unit, the Golem. If you're playing Mercia, you want golems. You need golems. Mercia golems are so good. While a golem might be a gimmick play or a tempo play on anyone else, on Mercia, it is a must-have. Of course, you won't have one until the mid or late game, but build one when you can. They're really great. Take a look at this example where our opponent, Ryota, also has Groove, and they get to attack into us. This is an odd situation because normally Mercia, in 1.3 at least, would charge her groove before Ryota would. But Ryota gets the benefit of surprise on us. They get to attack, they get to groove into our golem, and deal tons of damage. Now the thing about a golem is that it does a lot of damage and counterattack damage even at low health. Fact, the golem's crit case is that the golem is below 40%, and then it's treated as if 40 is the new 100 for that golem. But we don't even have to worry about that. Mercia can just walk right up to the golem and heal it. And even at 70% health, it's not critting, it still has more than enough to take out a critical unit like an archer. That's 500 gold plus a unit that is now gone, and Mercia has not dropped in unit count at all. As we fight out the rest of this battle in a reasonable way it would take place, Pay attention to how purely dominant Mercia is, and how there isn't really a lot Ryota can do, though I'm sort of ignoring the villages to the right. Even though Ryota can deal tons of damage to both Mercia and the Golem, she'll have Groove back up before either one could possibly go down, and both can continue to do great and heavy damage in the meantime. Also, remember that crit case we talked about. That means the golem can get counterattacked back down to 40-ish, and now it's acting like it has 100% health as far as its attack power goes. That's insane. Whereas Mercia can just farm groove off of the weakened units the golem left in its wake. It is such an insane combination. Now, of course, there are a couple of different ways we could have done that. We could have had Ryota attack in a different way, had the pikes move in a different way. The point of this was just to illustrate the incredible power of Mercia Golem. Now I'm gonna let that clip finish playing in the background, but let's talk about what other kind of units Mercia is good with and what kind of units she's bad with. When you're playing Mercia, obviously you want to heal. And if you want to heal, that means the units you want to have should survive damage. They should survive common scenarios they're going to run into, common uh, damage situations. They shouldn't be units that get one shot. And that's the biggest thing with Mercia, and that's the biggest way you're going to play her a little bit differently. With Mercia, you want to be a little bit aggressive. You want to be on the offensive because you have a very fast groove. You have a very early window of power. 
And as you can see, look, that, that, that golem's still running. Incredible. Let's take a look at some specific examples. So when you're playing Mercia, there are squishy units that you need but you don't want a whole lot of, and tanky units that you want as many of these as you can grab. Check out the bottom of the screen first. We have swords and archers, and these you are not going to want to make too many of. You need swords, you need them for the capturing phase, they make good body blocks, and they're a little bit fast for how cheap they are. But the problem is, as you can see, they just get completely destroyed by a pike line. They get one shot by a lot of things, they're very easy to take down, and archers have the same problem. Even a sword can just happily run up to an archer and chunk it. And things like archers and swords are pretty weak to begin with. They don't do a lot of damage to big threats. And they're only good at very particular things. And when they're low on health, forget about it. A four health archer could maybe do three damage to a commander on planes. That's not a lot to speak of. But pikes are different. Pikes can survive pikes. They can survive one hit from something most of the time, as long as you're not getting too crazy. And a dragon can survive one hit from many different anti-air situations. It's very rare that you one-shot a dragon, if at all. So you have these pikes and these dragons, and they can take a good amount of damage, and then you can go in with Mercia and heal them. This is especially important for the dragon scenario, because normally one mage is enough to deter a dragon strike. If the dragon can't hit the mage without taking too much counterattack damage, the dragon can at best hit something else that's a big threat, take it out of the equation, and then take a ton of damage from the mage and be forced back to heal. But if Mercy is in the picture, you can assassinate something with the dragon, take mage damage, and then heal back up. Counterattack the mage with other units and keep using your dragon. It's entirely different. Dragons are so much better with Mercia. Pikes have a second life that you can use. It's not just, oh, my pike line's so weak now, run it back. It's, you didn't wipe my pike line? Now face it a second time, zombie pikes. Knights are also very good with Mercia, but you have to remember that knights can get one shot under certain scenarios, especially with a pike line. A pike crit is usually a death sentence for a knight. However, knights will usually be dropped to only about 50% from most hits, like an alchemist crit, or they can even survive a harpy or an archer under most circumstances, as long as they're not like crit on a road or something. So the knight will usually live. Similarly, if you have a trebuchet, Trebuchets don't usually get one shot. They usually get brought down really low in a big fight. And the idea is, haha, I've weakened your treb. It won't be able to hit me anymore. I'm safe. But now Mercia can come in and like, nope, treb, here's your second life. And the treb can keep attacking. Your entire formation has just been revived and can counterattack. You might even be able to force them off the treb position without having to retreat the treb. So for this reason, knights and trebs are even better with Mercia. I like making a few early knights if I can't do anything else, if I can't get that golem, if I can't get that treb, and then go super aggressive. Additionally, you might not expect this, but alchemists are also good with Mercia. It's not only that they supplement the golems, which are already great with Mercia, and remember, alchemist heals on golems are almost efficient. Alchemist heals on golems and something else is gold efficient. If you have two golems, an alchemist heal on two golems at once is better than retreating and reinforcing those golems. Not to mention, combined with Mercia's already 50% heal, you now have a flex 70 heal to spread around the map. They can usually touch up any units Mercia couldn't quite get back, like those two pikes. 70 pikes, maybe not enough to defeat that like nine pike or that, that nine mage, but bring it back up to a 90 pike, maybe now it can. So although Mercia is a healer, you do want one or two alchemists running around. It'll make your army almost immortal and crazy annoying to fight. I, I didn't go through every possible unit, but I think you get the idea. Harpies are pretty squishy, so maybe they don't do as well with Mercia. But that doesn't mean you never build a harpy, you never build an archer. You should always make a unit if you need it for that situation. But when you're playing Mercia, you want to tend towards the tankier units because you can leverage them, you can abuse them, you can bully with them. Healers, especially Mercia, Mercia is a bully commander. And I'm gonna show you how to bully a position with just Mercia, right here. 
All right, so keep in mind that this isn't a complete tutorial. This is just a demonstration of what Mercia can do. So here we have an early game situation, recently captured villages. And there are two fronts, one on the bottom, which we're going to ignore for now, and one on the top. I've chosen not to have Mercia join my main army. And this is early game, very, very early capturing phase. We've just been capturing villages. So I wander into enemy territory, right? Attack a village. I've just gotten a ton of groove. I'm at 60%. The enemy commander counterattacks me. I'm now at 70%. It's crazy. I have 70% groove just from that one engagement. Now it costs me 200 gold to do that, but my enemies just had two turns without that village. So similarly, they're out 200 gold. Now Sedge recaptures the village. The village is much weaker, so is mine, but Sedge has taken damage. That's my advantage. So now I can go in again. I can attack Sedge or I can attack the village. I have so many options. I'm going to attack that top village because seven is the highest I can guaranteed one-shot the village. I don't want that village getting any more health. Remember that a commander can take out a village 100% of the time at full health if the village doesn't have more than 70% because it's the minimum. All right, now Sedge has just lost 100 gold based on that attack. Doesn't know what to do. Do they recapture the village or go after me? Sedge chooses to recapture the village, that's fine. You lost 100 gold, I lost nothing, I have Groove. This is great for me. I can keep denying you 100 gold every turn, or I can just smack you in the face, and I don't have to worry about healing because I can pop my Groove at any time. Meanwhile, Sedge, being Sedge, or any commander with a very slow Groove, is not going to get Groove in time to fight me, right? I can just keep abusing this. The best they can do is get a little bit of a Groove from attacking me or from me attacking them, but I'm getting tons of groove from killing villages. Additionally, you know, just because you're playing Mercia doesn't mean you can't go back. You can go back and reinforce if you want to, and then you still have your groove for pressure. You can keep up the attack, and you can get pretty low with Mercia very safely. The important thing is just remember, okay, what can lethal me? What can kill me? What combination of things drops me to zero? As long as you're making sure one, you don't get surrounded, and two, you can't drop to zero, you can keep it going. Now look how much gold Sedge has been spending healing Sedge, recovering and losing from the villages. I'm like 700, 800 gold up on Sedge right now, just from bullying with a commander. And this is even better if I were to bring a sword in here. Let's say we both have a sword, right? As long as we're both keeping the sword out of commander range, if my sword takes damage, I can use Mercia to heal it back up. And now my damage sword can kill their damage sword. And their damage sword isn't a threat to my sword. Or if they use their villages to heal their sword, now my sword can take out that village. So when you add like one or two units to the top front, it gets even better. And the main front still has our armies there. Sedge can't retreat the main front or I'll sweep him, right? So he's kind of trapped. And that's the kind of early game bullying pressure Mercia can apply whether you're doing a solo roam or bringing a sword or something with you. Now keep in mind that this is only for the opening of the game. This is only for the capture phase when the villages are very new. You can do it a little bit later, but there's a greater risk of being surrounded or just killed or even ignored if your opponent has a good army in the south. All right, now we've gone over units, we've gone over bullying. Let's see an example. This is an example game in quick play of me playing against a Mercia who plays a pretty decent Mercia. But this is also an example, not only of how to play Mercia, but of how to counterplay Mercia. Now, remember, what Mercia wants is tanky units. Mercia wants her units to get low. Mercia wants to apply as much early pressure as possible. So this Mercia is going to do a great job of coming to bully me, of applying early pressure. And I'm going to show you how to fight that, how to get around it. The secret, believe it or not, is to ignore Mercia. Whoa, that's so weird, right? Why would you ignore Mercia? Isn't she this big bullying threat? Well, she definitely is a big bullying threat, but that's more the reason why you need to ignore her. Now, I'm not saying don't interact with Mercia. I'm just saying, for one thing, groove denial is not really a thing with Mercia. As I've shown multiple times, she will get her groove, and you cannot stop it. But Mercia likes her units tanky, and she likes to make walls. So building an archer is a very good Mercia counter because archers break walls. 
they help you take out a unit in a single turn by bringing it low enough so another unit can finish it off. I made an early archer, not only to counter the knight that Mercia made, notice that early knight on this map, very Mercia, or the pike, or the fact that she made another um, mage to help with the healing, all those things are very weak to archers. Now, keep in mind, I am playing Nuru, and a great way to beat Nuru is to put lots of early pressure on Nuru. The reason being that Nuru needs to gold save to make use of her groove. Even though it's fast like Mercia's, Nuru needs money to fuel it. So it doesn't really matter how often Nuru charges her groove if she can't spend money on it. That's another reason that Mercy is going for a, a very early bullying tactic against me. She figures, okay, I'll just run right into Mercia. My groove heals. Her groove at best creates an expensive unit that I can destroy, and I'll just keep healing, so I'll come out ahead. And it was very smart. I had to really think about how I was going to deal with this. First thing I did was put my archer really deep. Not a lot of mobility there, but remember archers are squishy, so I wanted it to be safe. Um, now, I just said ignore Mercia. Why did I attack her with the archer? Well, for one thing, I couldn't attack anything else. And for another, I wanted to try to force her to use her groove to get rid of it, right? So I'm putting pressure on Mercia, trying to force her off, get her low enough that she has to retreat a little bit and back off. I said to ignore her, but you have to interact a little bit if she gets too up in your face. Bring her low, threaten her. Now she either has to back off or use Groove. Those are the only two choices. Now meanwhile, Mercia responds by going Knight, Pike, straight into me. And look, when you go Pike into Pike like that without a crit to back it up, when you go Knight into Commander like that, what happens? You take damage. Why does Mercia not care? Because Mercy is Mercia. Mercia can heal up all that damage that was just done. However, my opponent decided to use the Alchemist and then Mercia to get Mercia at full and all her units at full. Now all the damage was just undone. I honestly think the Alchemist was a bit unnecessary there. Mercia alone would have done most of the healing needed. So that's a great way to bully with Mercia, you know, just get the pieces you need. But here's how I'm going to ignore her. I'm going to ignore Mercia and one-shot all the units around her. Notice how I'm not attacking Mercia anymore. She just used Groove, so her Groove charge is at zero. She's going to get it back pretty soon, but that's okay. If I destroy all the units around Mercia and threaten to surround her, remember we talked about that before, you don't want to get surrounded no matter how tanky you are, then that's a big threat. She has to back off even if I can't kill her at risk of being surrounded. Her unit count dropped, her position dropped, her ability to pressure me is going away. She can stand there attacking that village all day, and I will lose out on the 100 gold every turn. That sucks for me, and it's been draining me so far. You can see that Mercia still has a lot of gold. And as Nuru, I didn't make anything expensive, just a spear, and I'm still taking heavy damage. But my defensive position has gotten really good, and I've destroyed some of Mercia's troops. I've weakened her ability to wage war. Now, do you notice anything that this Mercia might be doing wrong? Well, take a look. First of all, she's not accounting for the possibility that I could surround her. Second, all the units she's bullying me with are very weak. She went mage to the front line, right? Sword. I don't see any pikes. I don't see any more knights. There's nothing tanky here. These are all weak units. So I choose to ignore Mercia, instead attacking all the units around her, taking them out. It doesn't matter if she can heal or not if she has nothing left to heal. So continuing the bully with such weak units that her groove doesn't support and allowing me to just wipe them off the map, that was a bad play. In general, but especially for Mercia. You don't want a mage spam as Mercia if you don't have anything else to heal. The entire point of Mercia mages is I want to heal something, not I want to attack you. Now, Mercia did finally bring in that golem, and by putting it on a forest tile, even in my current situation, I would be hard-pressed to kill it. I have to use my commander, who Mercia can attack, the golem can attack. And you remember from that duel with Joda that it doesn't exactly favor me to be in that position. But that's okay. 
I can still continue to ignore Mercia and destroy all the units around her because this Mercia made very many positioning mistakes. Just one pike, a sword, a balloon, all things I can one-shot all in range of me, and I have my own golem. And I've now surrounded Mercia. She has groove, like I said, we could not prevent that from happening. It's, it's often not even that worth it to try unless you're maybe stalling it for a turn or two. She has groove, she has golem, but she has nothing else. I've taken that village away, I've surrounded her, we, we've done all the things we said shouldn't happen. Now, at this point, my opponent does surrender, so that's it for this demonstration. But I, I think you can see everything we talked about, how potent that bullying was, the counterplay of 100 to 0 wing units, why attacking me with weaker units wasn't necessarily a good idea. She should have waited until she had that golem to mount the assault, right? Now, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Even though my opponent surrendered, and I was probably going to win, the game was far from over. They had enough gold to make a second golem. On their turn, what they could have done, for example, is they could have gone golem into alchemist, one-shotting it. Then Mercia could have gone around the knight and attacked it. The golem would be at full health. Mercia would be pretty close and have groove. I wouldn't have a lethal on Mercia, and it would be really hard to kill the golem. The pike could advance, and Mercia could make another golem. This would mean that Mercia lives, the golem was able to take out an important unit. I might be able to surround and kill the golem, but if I fail, it's still alive. Mercia heals it with Groove. There are now two golems that can attack my troops. And remember, this player has a lot of money saved up, so they could make like a, an alchemist or a mage on their turn or an archer or something, and then just defend in, and I might have to back off a little bit. So I probably won, but it was savable if we use the Mercia tactics that we talked about. And speaking of failing to use the Mercia tactics that we talked about, check out my own particular epic fail in this Veterans Tournament match with myself against Endiment. It's a Mercia mirror, and guess what I didn't do? I did not build a golem. I do put my squishy units on the front lines in front of all these pikes. I fail to finish off units, I let my own units get finished off. My opponent uses one, and no more than one, archer to wreck me and break my wall. It's basically, Endemit plays a very good mercy game and I do not. You can enjoy me getting walloped in the background while I describe it. So as you can see by this point I'm very much outpiked and doing my best. I did build two knights. But I don't use them correctly. I send them right to the front lines where they can be one-shot. And what did we talk about? Don't do that. Bad, sneaky, bad. You're not supposed to let your units be one-shot. And lo and behold, well, they technically survive two hits, but the point is you're not supposed to let them fall. And pretty much everything fell. Look, my opponent is going out of their way to finish off my units on their turn. You see that one health knight? They use the golem's entire attack just to finish off that one health knight. They leave nothing. That is the proper way to play against Mercia. Similarly, I fail to do that. I'm just like, well, uh, I, 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 I use Witch Hex. I'm sure using Witch Hex against Mercia is a good idea. It doesn't only damage them in a way that can be healed. You see, the golem's still alive. It's at half health. That knight is still alive. It's at about half health. Ugh. Oh, and then this is where I just get wrecked. And Endiment is like, yup, now I'm going to do the Mercia thing and heal all my units. And, and then I just, I, I completely get destroyed. Now if you want to watch this match from the beginning in all its glorious detail, I highly recommend checking out the Groove of War's own YouTube channel. You can watch tons of matches from tournaments, including when I eventually get my revenge. Including this, the Veterans Tournament, the Tester Metal Tournaments, and the Groove of War Tournaments. And for more competitive play in general, check out the Groove of War Discord, I'll drop that in the description below. Alright, stay tuned for my upcoming videos, all about the different commanders and how to properly use them in competitive play. Again, this is more of an introduction, we haven't covered everything in every kind of detail, but you should have introduced to the general unit compositions and concepts necessary to be a great Mercia player. Stay tuned, and welcome to Competitive Wargroove.